It is International Day of the Girl, and one of Canada's highest profile advocates for girl empowerment joins us from the Canadian Embassy in Washington, where she was a featured guest of the Most Powerful Women's Summit last night. Sophie Gregoire Trudeau is the spouse of the Prime Minister, as if she needs that introduction. Uh, Sophie, I guess I want to get your thoughts on what was the most uh, significant takeaway of the summit that you felt should be shared with the girls everywhere on their day. And you can't say some guy named Justin Trudeau's speech, by the way. <laughs> Don't worry, that would have been my answer, Don. <laughs> Happy International Day of the Girl to everybody. You know, the key messages are really about how do we unite our efforts as individuals, as girls and as women, uniting together with men, with men as well, and how do we unite all the organizations on the ground's effort to be able to impact the lives of girls and women across the world with more efficiency and collaboration? I mean, you wrote, your, the Prime Minister wrote today in a column that you challenged him to raise your sons as feminists too. How do you do that? Well, I think that with children, and any, any parent will know that your, your actions speak louder than words. And I think that kids feed off our energy. They see how we interact with other people, with the world around us. And when you fight and when you, you dedicate your life to fight for more equality for everyone, um, your kids feel that. My kids ask me questions on what I do, and I'm very honest with them, obviously with an appropriate language for their age. But I think that we need to have those conversations at a very young age and with our young boys who do live in a society where their notion of masculine, masculinity is a little bit boxed in, and it's, 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 it narrows their, their opportunity for full blooming and for their, their own potential. Mm -hmm. I think we have to have those honest conversations that are sometimes can be awkward, but it's so much better to stay in silence because if you look at the data, if you look at the research, we know that inequality be, be, between men and women and girls and boys is there. It's happening everywhere. So we must have these honor, con honest conversations from a young age. Okay, I mean, I, I, as you reference, uh, girls endure horrible discrimination around the world, but particularly in like combat zones and some of these countries. But what's, what disadvantages do you specifically see girls here needing to overcome in Canada today? Well, here in Canada, and I speak to the girls, you know, through my role as an ambassador for PLAN and with uh, Women Deliver, I meet young girls who are telling us that they are anxious, they are feeling overwhelmed in a culture that asks them to be what they are not physically, mentally, uh, in a culture of competition, of individualism. They need to be able to be leading themselves and not being led by the media, by social media, by the pressure of becoming a person that they are not. And I think that we're having more and more conversations of vulnerability, sharing our stories, sharing our path of suffering. And we realize that wherever we come from, our stories are pretty much the same in the sense that we all want equality, we all want to be loved, we all want to have the full potential and opportunity to grow and to participate fully in our, in our societies. So the conversation always comes back to equality. I, I, this is a hard one because it was five years ago yesterday that 15-year-old Amanda Todd killed herself. She'd been blackmailed by an online predator and I, I guess it's difficult, but what's your message to girls like her that I'm sure they're out there are facing cyberbullying and tormented by it? What, what can they do? When you face cyberbullying, and again, this is a conversation that I've had with young women and young girls across the country, uh, we need to be able to give girls tools to be able to take perspective, take distance uh, between themselves and the critics of you know, social media and how it can impact our lives. We need to be able to empower women who are suffering and by telling each other our stories, and let's say somebody is uh, being bullied over internet, we absolutely need to be able to have tools and surroundings where they can have a safe conversation, they can feel that they can confide in other people around them on this issue. Nobody should suffer in silence. When it comes to these kinds of issues, silence can kill. And this is 
a very unfortunate faith, obviously. We want to change that. That can't happen. And the more honest we are with each other and to, with ourselves throughout the suffering and, and, and throughout the reality that it's putting so much pressure on young girls to face criticism over social media, we must continue to have these conversations. It's a difficult scenario, but silence is, is one issue, as you raised, uh, that confronts girls and women. And girls need to see empowerment in women. And I guess I'm wondering what you, what the girls of today to know that they, when they have to stand up to like people like the Harvey Weinsteins of the future, how do they deal with that? Again, when it comes to having conversation with girls, what I hear from them is that there is a lot of pressure to look a certain way, act a certain way, perform a certain way, and there are very mixed messages. We are telling them, be yourself, be truthful to who you are, but what does that mean in a society of comparison, competition, and uh, individualism? So I think it's very important to be able to mentor young girls and from young, for young girls to gather together and to have true conversations on what they feel intimidated, intimidated with. And when we hear stories of sexual assaults, wherever that may happen, and it happens in all areas of life, no one is invincible and no one is, is uh, hidden from that. Um, we need to speak up. We need to talk about it. And I think that we need to talk about it as women, but the men around us have to, have to raise their voices as well and accompany, accompany us on this path of having real conversations and, and making real change happen because we are sharing the data, the research, and the truth on what's happening in our lives as human beings. All right. Well, on behalf of my three daughters and my one-year-old granddaughter, I hope you're right. I hope the future is pretty bright for girls everywhere. Happy International Day of the Girls, Sophie. Thanks for joining us. So ever hopeful. Thank you so much.